Hello, everyone, and welcome to Growing Together, a gardening podcast with me, John Lamb, and Don Kinsler, a lifelong gardener and the North Dakota State University Extension Horticulturist for Cass County. Don, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, these podcasts are a highlight of my week. I love talking gardening. I understand we're on number nine. Ah, great. Yeah, that's good to know. Don, I got a joke for you. What kind of a vegetable always shivers? What kind of vegetable always shivers? I don't know. A chili pepper. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we'd break that out because we're not quite out of winter yet. We're we're seeing the end. We're seeing some melting. We're seeing a frost come or the thaw coming rather. So we're, we're getting excited, but we're not quite there. We're not ready to get into the garden. So we thought we'd talk about some inspiration, places that we go to for inspiration, sources that we look at, sources that we go back and read or even watch uh, is to get ideas and also sometimes just to like pass the time, warm us up, make us feel better, better about what's coming up, right? Yeah, well, I've even written about that. I call it thought gardening. We can, in, in our head, we we can go to places, we can go to a beautiful landscaped area all in our head, uh, and we get that inspiration from books, magazines, blog sites, uh, uh, websites. And so, yeah, to me, that's a legitimate thing of taking you out of this snowy realm until spring gets here and getting you some inspiration. We can learn things in the meantime. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Gardening. It's it's not all it's not all escapism, but escapism is nice because we are we're learning some things and then also we're kind of planning or we're we're kind of we're setting forth some ideas that we can bring back, you know, once we can actually get out there and and get our hands dirty. Yeah, I love it because I think most people can relate. When you look at something whether it's a book or a magazine, you thought, "Wow, that landscape is awesome." And then you think, "You know, I could probably do some of that in my own yard. So it kind of gives you something to shoot for. And if people are like me, if they don't do that planning, they stand out in a yard and they look at things and they can feel overwhelmed. So it's good to kind of have a plan going into the going into the year. If you don't, you can still you can still do plenty of things. But but for me, I, I like to have a plan. So I like to have some things to some ideas in hand and some 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 things to look at. Yeah, you know, and uh, the thing that I enjoy is when you look at maybe a, this beautiful landscape and you you wish that whole landscape was in your own yard. Yeah. It's beautiful. But sometimes you'd look at, wow, the corner of that beautiful landscape, I could do that in a similar corner of my own yard. So sometimes we can do little chunks of a beautiful landscape. So you brought in a lot of books and publications and we're going to talk about those. So why don't you get us started? Like what, what are some of the things, some of the, some of the books, let's say that you regularly reach for some of the books that you like to pull out in winter and take a look at? Well, the first thing I look for are materials that are written for our area, for our area by, by gardeners who've actually gardened in our area. So that's what I look for first. I, I mean, I love national books, but we, we really need things tailored to our climate. And our, our climate here is zone, we're zone four, right? Right. Zone four, the northern half of North Dakota, Minnesota would be zone three. And a lot of the national type books, of course, are written for zone five, six, seven, eight, and, and warmer. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first thing that I look for are uh, books or magazines that are tailored to our area. And so there's really good ones. Should we uh, mention maybe a few books? Should we start in there? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Well, w one of the books that I've really enjoyed it was written by my forum garden column predecessor. And boy, uh, would that I could write as many years as, as Dorothy Collins did. She wrote 50 some years until yeah. she was in her 90s. Yep. I worked with her. Yeah. She was yeah, great. Awesome. I read her every every Sunday as I was growing up and enjoying gardening, you know, as a teenager, uh, high schooler, uh, I read Dorothy Collins. Well, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, a, there is a compilation of her columns in a book called Flowers Between the Frosts, Flowers Between the Frosts by Dorothy Collins. It's a great, great uh, archive of her garden columns. So that is great. I love that. Uh, the other series of books that I love is called The Prairie Garden, The Prairie Garden, which is a book series from a nonprofit in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And uh, you can easily check out that website, uh, the Prairie Garden. I add Winnipeg, Manitoba to make sure you get the right The Prairie Garden. And that book series um, is a number of years of books. Each year they come up with a new edition. For uh, 2023, it's Climate Aware Gardening. 
Uh, but for example, one year was all on shade gardening. One was in growing food. And you can order all these back issues as well. And they're not too expensive. Uh, they're kind of a paperback, but a wonderful gardening edition. Another good source is of, of good local gardening information is um, uh, two books that were written by Eric Bergeson. Yeah. Uh, the Bergeson family is from Fertile, Minnesota. So good, good hardy plant material from Fertile, Minnesota. Well, they're big. They've got big garden centers, don't uh, they've they? They've got a wonderful garden center. And that, that garden center is in about the third generation. And yeah. Eric Bergeson, who passed away a couple of years ago, but he, he wrote a couple of wonderful, wonderful books. And one of those is called Successful Gardening, on uh, the Northern Prairie, successful gardening on the Northern Prairie. And another one is Let's Grow on the Northern Prairie by Eric Bergeson. And both of those are wonderful, I'd kind of call them down-home gardening. And what I mean by that is you can tell if a garden writer has actually done the things that they're writing about because um, books such as Eric Bergeson's book are filled with kind of the little finesses that only somebody that has actually done that material would know. Um, here, here's an example. In his book, he describes when you're watering a hanging basket, you know, they dry out easily yep. outside. Okay, so when you're watering a hanging basket, give it some water, then go water something else, and then come back and water it again. Because some of the mixes tend to dry out and they're reluctant to take up water again. But if you give them some initial water, it'll help kind of wet it down. And then the second watering will actually penetrate. So that is the type of thing that only somebody that has kind of dealt with that knows. So I love those, that kind of down-home type gardening uh, from somebody that has actually done it. So well, Eric, Eric uh, Bergeson, great books. Yeah, and, and one of the things that was, that, that was great about both Eric and, and Dorothy, you know, uh, I think some of the books that we'll be talking about here are, you know, they're they're all – they're all nonfiction, right? So they're they're all they're they're all fact based, everything like that. But when you when you hear a voice, you hear their actual voice. You hear the writer's voice come out, and then there's some there's probably more personality in those two books than there might be in some of the other books that we're going to be talking about because these are real people. They've developed these kind of personalities. They're known in the, in the community. Like like you said, you were reading Dorothy for fifty years. So when we're reading right. this stuff now, it. It is nice. It's nice to hear from old friends again almost, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. And that makes the reading so much more entertain right. <laughs> entertaining, it's, I guess. We're not but reading I mean, a enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, on the books that I brought, I didn't bring horticultural science, right. which is the, the textbook I had when I was in college. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's got all the stuff, but it, it's pretty dry reading. And you don't get that personality coming through to you. You don't have these wonderful gardeners speaking to you the way that these books do. Yeah, and, and certainly both Eric and Dorothy left a great legacy uh, for for gardens and, and what, all that they did for the gardening community. So it is it's it's always nice to go back and and hear from those voices again. It is, and those those books keep uh, keep those gardener gardening voices alive. So that's awesome. A couple other books that I like from Northern sources here are were published by the University of Minnesota Press. And one of those is called Growing Perennials in Cold Climates. Uh, wonderful. Uh, and uh, it, it's a big book, Growing Perennials in Cold Climates. Now, perennials are a hot topic because it's fun to plant something like that, flowers, that will come back each year. And there's such a great variety. But, of course, you have to be careful that we choose varieties for our area. And there, there's a ton of perennials that will do well here. But we have to just, you know, choose wisely. And this is really a bit, look at the thickness of that yeah. book. It's a really, really good, it's got good photos in there and Good graphics, good, good, you know, good yeah. ways to break down information, what we at the newspaper call chunky little bits. Yeah, exactly. And so that's a great one for people interested in perennial flower gardening. And there's another one called, uh, by the same University of Minnesota Press, called Growing Shrubs and Small Trees in cold climates. And of course, most of us in our landscape, so uh, we've got some trees, but we've got lots of shrubs. And so this is a good textbook, but it's also written in a very readable way. Uh, but it's a good kind of textbook 
um, on shrubs, lots of good photos and things in it, and so that's great. And by the same press uh, is growing roses in cold climates. You know, it's interesting when I hear growing roses in cold climates. Um, if, if if you ever if you read some of the things or listen to what I say, I, I never call our climate challenging uh, <laughs> because, I mean, if you read some things from South Carolina, they say they're climate is challenging sure. uh, well because it's humid lots of diseases and you got snakes and alligators yeah. all over the place uh, so anyway I never call it our climate challenging we just need to f- figure out what to grow here and then grow it uh, it's a wonderful area in which to be so I, I do get kind of a kick out of the the growing in cold climates it kind of it gives kind of a cold feeling to <laughs> our but I mean I see their point is we need things uh, that will grow in and survive cold winters. And so, I mean, they're, they're wonderful, good reference books. But I yeah. do chuckle at the cold. And, you know, like like you said early on, you know, in the beginning of this when we were talking, like we want things that are relevant for us gardeners here in, in our area and in our zone. And one of the – you can go out and buy these books. You can order all these books. But also another good place to go is go to your local library because your local library is going to have books – Based on your area, and they're going to have books that people in their area can can are going to want to check out, are going to want to read. So go to your local library. I didn't have time to check and see if these books are available locally in local libraries, but I bet there are really some really good books in the local libraries to go out and check out. Yeah, I bet I bet there are. And um, so really any books that are written, and gardeners uh, love to see books, but again, do be cautious, a little cautious about where those books are written. We're going to take a quick little break, and we're going to come back. you got some magazines we're going to talk about, right? Yeah, magazines. It's kind of fun to go to the bookstore and browse the magazine section. All right. Well, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit inforum.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. All right, we're back. And Don, you you also, in addition to all the colorful books that you brought in, you brought in some magazines too. And so let's, let's talk about a little bit about what you got there. Well, the first one that I brought is called The Northern Gardener. The Northern Gardener. It's published by the Minnesota State Horticulture Society. It's a great magazine. And, of course, it's tailored to North Dakota, Minnesota, and areas northerly. And just a wonderful, inspirational magazine. Uh, this one that I happened to bring was Wild About Roses, and it has how to build a hobby greenhouse and talks about seeding. And I love it because it's filled with colorful photos and it gives me inspiration. And I know that it's written for our northern area. Yeah. And uh, look, at it talks really about gorgeous. new beginnings on a landscape and really some awesome, awesome some milkweed uh, in there, some roses. Yeah, exactly. Like. Yeah. Talks about all the different types of seeds. And so anyway, these, a person can get, um, the Northern Gardener, you can get that on newsstands. You can find it, or you can certainly subscribe to it as well. So that's a great one. And of course, one another magazine that I all see on the newsstands is Fine Gardening. Now, the Fine Gardening magazine has been around a long, long time. And they're pretty careful about indicating whether their articles are for the whole United States or if they're for certain zones. So fine gardening has been around long enough. They know that they need to kind of apply and tailor to different parts of the country. So, uh, but a person does need to read it with a grain of salt and watch the hardiness zone, zones four, zone three, and go. But I love the inspiration that it gives. Uh, You know, it's got so many nice landscapes pictured. And this is one of those, uh, wow, look at that. That's a, a water feature surrounded by a landscape. And to me, that tells me, you know, okay, I maybe can't make my whole yard look like that one beautiful one in the photo, but I think I could do that water feature with some ferns. I could do that in a corner, a north yeah. corner of my area. So I love the inspiration that it gives. You know, because sometimes one of the most difficult things is taking a concept, you know, you want your landscape or yard to look nice, but right. okay, how, 
what exactly, what are some concrete things that you could pull out and magazines such as this give you that? For example, look, look at that neat gate. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun to go from the front of your yard to your backyard, walking through that nice yep. archway and that nice white gate with an arch over the top? I think, gosh, I could plant some vines, flowering vines go over there. Some climbers that, over there, yeah. And wouldn't that be fun? So is see, just even in a quick little glance here, I'm getting some nice ideas of things yeah. that I, I'd like to accomplish in our own yard. So uh, those are two of my favorite magazines, Northern Gardener, uh, more tailored to our region, and then Fine Gardening, tailored to the whole United States, but some awesome, awesome inspiration. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about uh, a national magazine, again, like you said, sometimes you just look through it just to get inspiration. Sometimes you just want to see, well, how does a pop of color play off another color? You know, whether, and then you can try to find, you can contact your local garden center and say, what do I, I, I like this play here. Is there something locally here that we can do that, that can mimic that or that, that I can get maybe the same effect from. You know, that's a very good point because a person could actually take one of these magazines to the local garden center and say, you know, here's the look I'd like, but I know these plant materials maybe aren't adapted here. But what, what plants that are adapted, winter hardy, what plants could give me this same look? And so, yeah, the, uh, it's wonderful. When we had our, our garden center, sometimes people would bring in magazines and say, here, I want it to look just like this. Well, and and now, oftentimes you can come up with plants that are winter hardy that'll fit the bill. And now I'm sure, you know, with both with uh, you know, magazines, but also online sources too, that people can just clip a picture or can send a link. They could send that to a garden center and say, hey, what could we do with this? And you can kind of, that way you can start that conversation and you can, you can get going again, you know, just to the, that finding that inspiration is out there. And so- Talking a little bit about about websites, let's talk about your own uh, the the blog site NDSU Cass County Extension. Talk a little bit about that, like what what you're doing there, and also maybe the inspiration people can get from that. Yeah, what what I call my blog site or our Cass County uh, NDSU Cass County Extension blog site, uh, I call it Everybody's Yard and Garden Guide series, just because. Yard and Garden Guide, I, I like to talk about things that will work for everybody. Yeah. And so what, what, what you can do is to find it, first of all. It's probably easiest rather than remembering all those words. If you can remember my name, Don Kinsler, K-I-N-Z-L-E-R, uh, just look up or do an online search, Don Kinsler blog. That will take you to the NDSU Extension Cass County blog site. Now, on that blog site, the, the page will open – uh, with a, a whole appendix of things. I have it organized by uh, articles on lawns, trees and shrubs, flowers, vegetables, roses, etc. So if, if you have a specific topic you'd like to go on to, just click on one of those and it'll open up a series of articles on that. Uh, for example, we've talked about tomato blossom end rot. Yeah. So you just look up vegetable gardens, tomatoes, and it'll take you to that. You'll see that. Um, other things such as my favorite squash that's sweeter than all others. Uh, it'll take you to that. Um, one article tells, uh, is it better to bag lawn clippings or let them fall? Okay. Uh, things such as that. Uh, how about, um, do you need to rake up the leaves in the lawn or can you just mow over them? Articles such as that. Uh, how news to news how to you can use, as we <laughs> exactly. say. How to prune raspberries. Yeah. You know, and things such as that. So I, there's probably 200 or so different articles on that. And so they're easily searchable, like you could search pruning or something like that and it exactly. would come up? Yep. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. And, and so is there also a way there that people can submit questions to you? There are. Yep, uh, the there's a spot for questions there, so you can just click on there, and I think it also gives my email address too. So hopefully that's a very searchable site to help for some of the things that are tailored exactly to our area. All right, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some local groups that you can join or kind of keep tabs on to get, again, get some more inspiration, maybe find some people to talk to, share, compare notes. Uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out our full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at inforum.com slash podcasts. That's inforum.com 
slash podcasts. All right, we're going to talk about now, talk about uh, some local groups that either you can join or maybe you can go check out if they've got an event. A lot of these groups will have sales or they'll have other kind of events. But as a, as a good way to see what other people locally are doing, uh, people who have been gardening for a long time, and also, uh, you know, maybe maybe you can find out if that's kind of a, a social group that you want to join. So. Let, let's get started here, Don. What are, what are some of the ones that you really like? Oh, and it is fun to join gardening groups. And one thing I should mention, especially for newer gardeners, or you know, sometimes you hesitate to join a group because you think, well, gosh, they all know each other, and here I'm going to be new into this. It'd be group, a little intimidating. I'm going to be uh, awkward. But no, all of these groups, uh, even if they're they're old, longtime gardeners, new gardeners are so welcome in any of these. Now, most states have a horticulture society. So there's the North Dakota State Horticulture Society. There's the Minnesota State Horticulture Society. So each of those have a site that you could go on and join. But also local garden cent- uh, local garden clubs are wonderful. Uh, for example, the Fargo Garden Society, to which I belong, a wonderful group um, in – uh, that's obviously in Fargo, Fargo area. Uh, West Fargo has the Three Rivers Garden Club. And so many towns have a local garden club. And so do check them out. And don't don't feel intimidated. Don't feel like, gosh, uh, you know, I just hate to join because maybe I, maybe I don't know as much as other people. D- don't feel that way. Uh, we all enjoy – everybody enjoys passing on information and none of us know everything. Right. So we're all still learning. And I think gardeners especially always want to learn something new oh, because yes. they, every that we all know that the plants that you have, you know, you may not want to do that same one next year. You may want to have a different look, and your garden's always changing, always expanding. Your trees are trees are are sometimes that they're bigger. Sometimes you lose a branch, you get more sun. Things are always adaptable there. They are. And uh, Professor Neil Holland, who was one of my teachers, and passed away at I believe approaching 90, age 90, and he went on to own a garden center. But anyway, even at in his advanced years, his favorite, one of his favorite expressions was, count the day lost, you don't learn something new. So even at his advanced age and great gardening, he was still learning new. So these uh, groups allow uh, each of us to pass along information, learn things new. And so do check out your local garden club. So the garden, the garden clubs that you talked about, are they specific type gardens? Are they like, let's say, cottage gardens? Or are they everything? Like kind of like, are they looking at, because everybody's got some different tastes. And some people may want to do, you know, we've talked about the the Japanese garden coming in, uh, the Asian garden that's going to be coming in. And then some people just want nice little cottage gardens that, uh, are, they, are they different? Are they so different? The, there are specific groups. groups. In okay. fact, uh, I believe North Dakota a uh, person after a little searching on these, but I believe North Dakota has a daylily society. Oh, excellent. And so there are some specific uh, areas. Another great group to join would be the Northern Plains Botanic Garden Society. That's right. Uh, which is uh, in Fargo. And so they're developing a regional botanic garden. That's going to be awesome to see as that develops. So again, I, I just really want to emphasize, you know, check out some of these because you'll you'll be in great company. And with a, a lot, uh, I think a lot of these groups, if not all of them, a lot of them will have a social media site too because it's a great way to get pictures out of what they do. So a lot of them will have Instagram accounts or Facebook sites. And so what are some of the Facebook sites that you, that you look at? Oh, there's some fascinating uh, Facebook sites. Uh, so if a person checks out on Facebook, just you know, search the Facebook bar, uh, NDSU Extension Lawns, Gardens, Trees. NDSU okay. Extension Lawns, Garden Trees. That'll tell you all what's going on in NDSU in, in gardening. And so that, will that have some – because a lot of times you'll do webinars. Will that have alerts to those it sure does. classes? Yep, it has. And it even has on the latest podcast that we do. That, it, well, we it, appreciate that. It lists that as well. So, yep, it has the different webinars. And sometimes it'll just have fun facts that are going on at the time. So check that one out. Uh, also, there's other groups um, such as Fargo Area House Plants yeah. Facebook group that has like four thousand really blown people. Up. That is really gone. The Minnesota Landscape Arboretum has a wonderful Facebook site, uh, and check out NDSU Woody Plants, a wonderful Facebook site. 
Uh, there's another uh, fairly local one called Gardening Fun in Zones 3 and 4, Upper Midwest. So there's some fun kind of local groups. And then you'll on there, you'll see where they kind of share what they're doing and fun groups. Well, and also if you're interested in gardening, uh, follow some of the local garden centers because – a, yes, they, they have point. fun. They'll have fun with some posts and they'll share some interesting things. But it's also a great way to learn, like, if they're doing classes, uh, if they're doing some kind of a seminars. Um, and maybe like, if there's an issue that's happening, you know, in the community or something that's happening locally, some things to, to point out. Because they are businesses, but the best way that they develop uh, following as businesses is by providing services and by providing knowledge and sharing that information and making that business be appealing to go in and want to check out. You know, one thing I love about checking the Facebook sites on local garden centers is oftentimes they'll show pictures inside their greenhouses. Yes. And right now here in April, uh, April 6th, we've got snow all over the ground. And I've been noticing on the Facebook sites, so the garden centers are showing inside their greenhouses. Mm -hmm. And you can just tell it's warm and sunny. The plants are growing. They're coming They're getting it ready for us. And I can't wait. The other thing I love about some of the local garden centers Facebook sites is they'll show some of the um, some of the new plants that they're going to be offering. So we can learn some things. So we can think, gosh, I'd love that uh, 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 beautiful shrub. And well, so do check out, uh, I mentioned Bergeson Garden Center. Uh, they've got a good one. Um, you know, Baker's, s and uh, uh, Hollins and Moorhead, wonderful sites. You know, I, I can't begin to list all of them, so my apologies for those that I'm not listing. But do check out, uh, you know, Shea West in uh, West Fargo and um, Cheyenne Gardens in Harwood. Just you know, so do check out the local garden centers. Wonderful source. Yeah, and what you were just saying too is like if they're posting that they're getting in this certain plant for the first time, maybe that's a plant that you've read about in one of these other books or magazines uh, or websites and you think, hey, this is something I remember seeing that and I remember thinking that that was really cool. Now I can find it locally. This is great. It is, yeah, great. So super Facebook sites. So we're going to take another break, and when we come back, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the YouTube channels that, uh, that we like watching. Uh, get some inspiration from there. When you can't make it to City Hall or school board meetings, local journalists from Inforum.com will be there to report the facts and get your questions answered. Local news works for you. Stay up to date at Inforum.com. All right, we're back, and we're going to talk a little bit about you brought in a lot of great books and magazines and, and include us into a lot of websites. I'm going to talk a little, bit, a little bit about where I go for inspiration, and that's to YouTube. And I know that that seems kind of maybe vacuous, that you just get kind of lost watching the boob tube, you know, the, the newer version of that. But I found a lot of great information, and honestly, a lot of this started a couple of years ago in winter at about this time when we were just so kind of just tired of winter and we just wanted to find something on, on screen. And what we stumbled across was this show, uh, Monty Don. Monty Don the Gardener. I think I sent this to you a couple of years ago. You did. It's and, great. And Monty Don is an English gardener. Um, and so the, the show is set up where I think each episode there's – there's uh, maybe two or three gardeners who have written in, and they they have they have a certain project that they're working on. They want his advice, so he kind of walks over to their place. And it's all very folksy. It's very it's very uh, it's on it's on a public television, I think, or BBC here. Um, you, you can find it, uh, but it's also on YouTube. And so Monty Don is just like a great, very calming relaxing voice you know again you take and keep in mind that this is their their gardening in 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 England so not necessarily always stuff that we could learn from but it was a great kind of escapism 
but also again to watch, you know, like what are some things pruning is pruning is universal. Uh, whether you're pruning there or pruning here, there's still some things that you should, that are there. There's some follow through there in both of those. Well, I love things from English gardening, you know, because uh, I mean, they've been gardening for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, yes. you know, our country is relatively newer. So yeah, it's fun to see some of those old, really old gardens. Yeah. And so like we watched that one and we kind of, you know, just bored through that and, and just finish that off. And then we had to start looking for like, well, what are some other ones to find? One of the big ones that we found is I would say it's one of the bigger ones out there right now. And that's Garden Answer. And this is a woman, Laura, and she's from Eastern Oregon's grown zone 6B. So it's not always relevant to us, but she posts so often. She posts probably four or five times a week and she plants so much. She does it year round. She, in, in the winter, she'll, she'll do talk about seeding. She'll talk about other things that they've got going on. She'll talk about like plants that are, that are upcoming, uh, that they'll be on the market soon. So it's really great information for that. And also very great. If you watch the YouTube site, if you watch it on your TV, you don't get it. But if you go and watch it on your computer, she'll have links below to all of the sites, all of the, all of the plants that she's talking about. So it's this great kind of index there, but Again, not necessarily always our zone, but she has such a big lot. Her house is on a, I don't even know how many acres, and they just keep developing garden space for her because she's basically a professional YouTuber now. And so she's an influencer, so she gets a lot of, she gets a lot of goods from, uh, she works a lot with, with um, proven winners. So she'll get in plants before they're on the market. And so it's really fun to see. And so she'll talk about like how they work together as far as like plants in the garden, things like that. And she's got so much space that she'll have shade gardens. She'll have, she has a greenhouse. She's got big now an orchard. So it's fun to see all that. Again, it's kind of escapism, but you can learn some interesting things from there. And, and yeah, different soil and everything, but it's, it's a fun watch. But, you know, it's interesting. Even something done in a different area of the country or, or, or different country, there are certain things that are universal. For example, anything done on houseplants, yep. that's pretty much universal. Yeah. Uh, and also annual flowers, like container gardens. There's a lot of great annual flower type things, new varieties that people talk about. That, of course, that's all adapted, whether it's in England or South Carolina or here. Uh, most annual type flowers, uh, kind of universal too. Yeah. And another great thing that she does is she started, I think they've done about six of them now, but it's almost a weekly series where she asks for her followers, which there are a million, I'm sure, but to send in pictures of their gardens from all over. So the, there are some places coming in from overseas, which is great. But I've even seen some from our area on there, which is nice to see because there is. we're talking about like, well, how, how do other people approach winter? Do they have things of winter interest. They have plants that are still out there that it, they it don't cut It broadens our horizon too. You it know, really we don't does. just focus in on just what we're doing. It broadens our horizon and knowledge. And again, because she's got such a big, huge palette of space, watching it is, I shouldn't say it's not unrealistic, but it's not really relatable for us. So it's great to see the people who watch her, like I do, and they send in pictures of their home gardens and you can see like kind of like things that they learn from her that they've put into sure. play. It's really fun to see. There's another one that through her we found out about and that's the impatient gardener. And her name is Erin and she's in southeastern Wisconsin. So it's zone five. So we're getting closer. That's an interesting topic, impatient gardener. Impatient gardener, which is great. <laughs> and she does this thing too. I think it's called uh, – Weeds and wines. So where she pours herself a glass and she goes and talks about like her least favorite weeding activity. So she tries to find a, a fun balance there. Sure. So that's a really fun one. But she, again, closer to us, not necessarily the same zone, but she's got a much smaller space, still bigger than most of our homes, but still a smaller than Laura and Garden Answer. And also a lot more shade there. So it's really fun to see her different approach. She's also very good at admitting like not everything works. And so how do you how do you work with that? How do you adapt when things don't go according to plan? Because things don't always go according to plan. That's a really fun one to watch for us. Yeah, I bet, I bet it is. And I, I, I'm i still chuckling about that impatient gardening. Yeah. Because, you know, we want our fruit trees to – we, we want them to start bearing young instead of waiting five to seven years. Right away, <laughs> so I just yeah. Love that too. We want to see the results. Exactly. 
And this one is the closest yet. This is the one that I've found. And I'm sure there are some other local ones, but I haven't been able to find them. But this is Roseanne's Gardens. She's based out in the cities of the Twin Cities, Roseanne. And she's got a, a pretty simple house. It's a really nice house. But and it's the lot is really relatable for for people in this area. I think it's an older house, so she's very much into cottage garden. But she's done like a whole series on your side yard between your house and the property line, you know, in a limited space. What do you do there to make that work? What do you do there to make that appealing? She's very she's very very calming. She doesn't post as often as these other two, maybe about twice a month or so and and in the winter you know less but it is very very fun to watch her because again you, you see that it, it's very relatable when you're just talking just in a little bit in southern minnesota you can see the things that she's doing there it's really really fun and the thing that i like about as you describe these youtubes too i i love it that these are people that are actually doing it yeah you know they aren't just talking about somebody else doing it or they aren't just talking in theory you know, these are people that are actually making this work. Well, and then there there is a real value to watching gardening on YouTube because you can actually see the job. You know, like how sure. do you prune? Because I think when I started pruning things, I was very nervous about am I going to cut off too much? Am I going to make the wrong cut? Uh, all these things, all the, the different tasks, you know, when you watch people do them, you know, yeah, then all of a sudden it becomes real yeah. or relatable. And you're thinking like, oh, I could do, I can that. do that. Yeah, I could do that. And so speaking of videos and gardens, you were recently featured on a gardening video, right? Oh, and that was fun. Uh, the Pioneer PBS uh, has a weekly program. Uh, they have different seasons, okay? And I, I, I think each season has, well, I'm not sure how many episodes in a season. But anyway, currently they're, of course, in the 2023 season, Pioneer PBS. It's called Prairie Yard and Garden. And so anyway, we are uh, one of those episodes. It actually aired last week, but they have it on YouTube, uh, recordings available. So it was fun. They came out to our yard in South Fargo last summer, last July. Okay. And we talk about starting over in the landscape because six years ago we had to start over because we moved our house to a different lot and had to start over basically from scratch. So we talk about some of the things in how to get your landscape kind of, uh, you know, looking a little better or what do you do if you do have to start from scratch. And so it was fun. Uh, when I look back at that, of course, last July was dry our, our lawn, I wish it would have been more lush green because mm. I, I don't water our lawn much. But the rest of the landscape, I think, looks kind of cool. It's it's fun to look at. So anyway, it was it was an honor to have them come out to our yard. Yeah, and so again, if people are going to look for this on YouTube, what should they search? Uh, Pioneer PBS Prairie Yard and Garden. Pioneer PBS Prairie Yard and Garden. That'll take you there. And the host, Mary Holm, is just such a wonderful gardener. Uh, she was actually from our area. Uh, okay. she, uh, they, I believe, had a greenhouse up in northern North Dakota. And now she's the host of, of this. And it, uh, she really does a nice job. Well, I'm going to have to check that out now. Yeah, awesome. Well, that does it for another episode of Growing Together, a gardening podcast. I'm John Lamb. And Don Kinsler. And Don, if people have questions for you, where can they reach you? Yeah, feel free to email me. If there are any plant issues, uh, send a photo if if that applies. And you can email me at donald.kinsler. That's K-I-N-Z-L-E-R. Sometimes people tend to put an S in, but donald.kinsler at ndsu.edu. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you, everyone.